open the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board for uh, the evening of March 3rd, 2014. Uh, tonight on the agenda is the um, hearing for the Warren Articles relating to zoning for the 2014 town meeting. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, Carol, I'm going to let you introduce I our new... I wanted to introduce the new administrative assistant, Amy Fidago. If you wouldn't mind coming up to the table oh. for a moment, Amy. Uh, Amy Fidalgo is our new administrative assistant. You can have a seat for a Hi. minute. And, um, this is Mike Kerr, the chairman. Hi, Amy. Bruce nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The immediate Hi. past nice chair. To meet you. Christine Hi. Zipinski, nice to meet you. the vice chair. Sorry, Mike. Andrew Bunnell. Nice and Andy West. West. Nice to meet you. So, since the ARB and the administrative assistant have worked together from time to time, I wanted to give you a chance to meet each other. And Amy will be helping out from time to time um, in meetings with the minutes. Uh, so you'll probably be seeing more of her than you saw of the past administrative assistant. Is there anything you were, uh, would like to know about Amy? <laughs> we're really happy to, to have her on board. Uh, As are we. Yeah. How long have you been here? Oh, two weeks, two I would weeks. say. <laughs> Yeah. And how do you like it so far? It's wonderful. <laughs> it's, um, it's still getting acquainted with everything. So trying to make sure that I'm, you know, seeking out as much information as possible to really connect the dots on certain things that you know, Sometimes are they new don't to connect. Me. Don't okay. get too frustrated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. But it's wonderful. Good. Well, welcome. Great. Thank welcome you. aboard. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Um, so I think we will now open the hearing uh, for the Warren Articles uh, relating to the zoning uh, for the 2014 town meeting. Um, first of all, I'd, I'd like to welcome the proponents of the different articles tonight, as well as the members of the public. Uh, before beginning, I want to take just a couple of minutes to go over a few important points and ground rules. Uh, we will ask each proponent to present their article in their language for the recommended vote they would like the board to act upon. Members of the board will ask questions or make comments as they wish on that proposal, after which we will open the proposal up for public comment before moving on to the next article. For, for the public comment portion, I would point out the following. Please wait to speak until the chairman recognizes you. Please state your name and address when you begin your comments. Please address your remarks to the board and not to other members of the audience. Please be respectful of others when they speak by listening quietly. Please note that there is a limit on time for each speaker, but the best rule of thumb, and what I would ask, is that those who want to speak be respectful of everyone's time in making any comments. If a point has been made, please consider whether it needs to be made again in the exact same way. Any intentional disruption of other speakers will not be tolerated. As a reminder to people in the audience, the short blurb, for lack of a better word, uh, that is included in the warrant itself is a placeholder. The actual language of the zoning bylaw addition or change is developed by the proponent and then considered and potentially changed by the board. In the end, the board needs to vote on specific language and determine whether to recommend the language, uh, recommend that language, or no action to town meeting. Finally, and yes, I'll make this point. I believe that the proponent for Article 8, the dark skies or outdoor lighting bylaw ch uh, change, is not present. I have been informed by the chairman of the selectmen that he expects the board of selectmen will take up this article as it relates to a bylaw in the general bylaw and not the zoning bylaw. As such, the town moderator has informed me that he will use the recommended vote for the board of selectmen and not any vote by this board as it is not in this board's, board's purview. So, if anyone would like to comment on article, they, they can do so, but this board will not be uh, making a recommendation with respect to that particular article. So with that as background, I would like to start the hearing. Um, the first Warren article is Article 6, uh, relating to medical marijuana treatment centers. And that one is actually proposed by the board itself. So I will make a short presentation with respect to that. And Carol, you can fill in any blanks that I might have along the way. Um, I'm going to just read from this as well. Uh, this article was submitted at the request of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. In November 2012, the voters of the Commonwealth adopted a law permitting 
qualifying individuals to obtain and use marijuana to address medical issues without threat of state criminal prosecution. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Public Health then began to develop regulations for medical marijuana treatment centers. Annual, annual town meeting 2013 adopted a temporary moratorium on citing medical marijuana treatment centers until the dissolution of the annual town meeting 2014 in order to allow time for the Commonwealth to issue its regulations. During this winter, Fred Ryan, the Chief of Police, Christine Bongiorno, Director of Health and Human Services, Mike Byrne, the Zoning Enforcement Officer, Adam Chapdelaine and Andrew Flanagan, Town Manager and Assistant Town Manager, Douglas Heim, Town Council, Carol Kowalski, Planning Director, and myself got together on a couple of occasions to discuss the article and what, if anything, we learned from last year when it was put forth. It was suggested that zoning the centers in only B5, as, was, as happened last year, was too limited, at which point other districts were considered. After deliberating and seeking the input of all of the above, zoning in B3 and B5 was put forth as the recommendation. This was felt to be far less limiting while keeping the centers in public places with which the group, and especially Chief Ryan, felt comfortable. So the recommended vote in front of you has, well, first off, I want to uh, I want to also mention that one change was made to the original vote that you got. The original vote had, it's fairly technical, um, had us amending subsection I under the uses. And what we've done instead is we've added a whole other We've done it down to, um, we've added a new, uh, sorry about this, 1106B, a new numbered paragraph 4. So instead of amending 1106B1 and adding subsection I, um, we actually did it to uh, number 4. And I think if you have it in the audience, it's on the last page you will see the change made to Article 4. It's fairly technical, and that's just in making sure that the bylaw reads correctly. That change was made last year. We just didn't pick it up on the first go-around, um, and so we did that. Um, I want to show folks where B3 and B5 are before we do that. <coughs> Any questions or anything else? So last year, we went to town meeting uh, with uh, B5, which is this kind of bow tie right here, right in the middle of town. What has been added by taking up B3 as part of the new boat is the brown section. So you have that, this, the dark brown right there, and uh, down to down here, that part too. Um, so in the thinking, as I mentioned, um, the different um, folks who were, in, uh, who were consulted on this believe that this was uh, the best um, way to give uh, the dispensary the ability to um, have a, a bit more area to work with, uh, but at the same time, uh, keeping it in the public spaces that uh, both the chief as well as the director of uh, Health and Human Services would like to see it. So um, that's where it is right now. So anything else that you'd like to add now? Yeah, you'll notice that those are the three primary commercial centers. Right. And it was also felt that um, that makes it makes sense to have them in those locations because that's where there is a lot of activity. It normalizes it. Um, it also allows um, there to be the same amount of um, attention from law enforcement, if necessary, as um, there would be for any other commercial use. So th we also um, looked hard at what other uses were around mm -hmm. B3 and B5, and we're satisfied that um, on that level too would also make sense because there weren't as many schools um, in those areas. So. Correct. I, I will mention that state regulations have uh, built into them a 500-foot buffer from 
it's not just schools, it's buildings that have as their main focus children, I think. I'm not, I'm not getting that language exactly right, but essentially uh, there's a 500 foot buffer under state law. And one of the reasons we didn't play around with it in the reg was because we didn't want to lose the benefit of that by either countermanding it or some such thing. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we get the benefit of the 500 feet. We checked with the AG's office, and by not putting it in here, we get the benefit of that 500 foot buffer. So. James Feeney from the Department of Health and Human Services here in Arlington is with us tonight. If we have questions that are specific. Thanks, James. That's great. Department. Thanks for coming. Um, Okay. Um, yeah, I feel bad. Yes, please. Just in reading, um, I haven't had a chance to look this up. Does the medical marijuana treatment center include all uses? Yes. So it the way that the it's growing. defined, the way that it's defined, it's it's um, actually I think it's in the vote itself. The vote is cribbed right from the actual. Uh, sorry, I got too many pieces of paper here. Yeah, I wanted to grab it all somewhere. Office. Yes, it's it's this definition right here. Uh, I believe oh, okay. is the same, and it is everything, both the growing as well as the uh, distribution, um, cultivation. Uh, yeah, I do sit here. Cultivates, processes. Right. Those are the two I was thinking of. So th there's no restriction in size of this facility, right? The only thing that would restrict it is the market and the environmental space. design review. And yes. available space in those districts. Mm -hmm. Right. If there's if they're intending to build new and they have a real estate opportunity to build a new structure, it goes through EDR. So you'd have some control there. Yeah, and Chris and, and Carol, that's a great point. I mean something I should have brought up, I'm just probably too close to it. So if the uh, zoning bylaw recommendation is also to make these to, uh, these treatment centers um, subject to EDR. So by definition, that was the last page, that, that correction there. So that would be EDR. Just for people who may not be familiar with EDR, that's uh, a special permit that requires environmental design review. So that would mean that would be coming before this board. Um, and uh, <laughs> since none of these would be allowed as of right, you would have to apply for a special permit and it would be subject to the ARB's uh, higher level of scrutiny that comes with environmental design review as opposed to the uh, special permit process that the Zoning Board of Appeals follows. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Have any towns tried to split up the uses into different districts? Not that we know of. And, and I think the, the, the concern would be is that you would, you would, in essence, be splitting the state law Mm. And, you know, the concern would be that, you know, what does that mean? Um, you know, can you do it that easily? You mean to say that growers can go here and dispensaries can go exactly. there? Exactly. I, I, I talked to town council specifically about this, and he advised against doing something like that because of the fact that if, if the state changes the law, then you have to go back and change your bylaw, number one. And the other problem with it is that you can't necessarily get every use correct by splitting it like that, because right. the definition is all in one. So if something is considered a, a medical marijuana treatment center, I really have trouble with that phrase, um, that um, it, it, you would then have, quite likely, dispensing going out of cul cultivation and cultivation happening where dispensing is, because they, it would be too hard to, to um, divide that definition into clean parts. Mm -hmm. so, so the town council advised against that. Okay, that answers my concern. So, the the article would allow would include this use in our zoning bylaw. Correct, in B three and B five as presented. And how do the state regulations relate then to going ahead and sure building one or starting one? So right. So so this isn't all the 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 facility would need to do. It would first need the state license. And then the uh, Department of uh, Health and Human Services here um, is coming up with 
a slew of regulations as well that the uh, dispensary would need to meet um, based on the state regs as well. Um, so the first thing it needs to do is get a license from the state, and then after it gets a license from the state, then it has to meet the town ordinances, so both the zoning as well as the Department of Public Health. And then just yeah. to make sure that we've all got it on, and I appreciate your speaking to it directly, Mike, but um, on the, the vote, which we're on page two, we're getting rid of D as it appears there. Correct. And we're going to add it from the, from the, last, the page. last page. So, right. Correct. So that's it's a new D. So this is the vote beginning this day. Where, where it voted, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have A, B, and C from pages one mm -hmm. and two, and then D from the last page. So this whole last paragraph yeah. is gone. Yeah, that last paragraph is gone, and this whole page is added. Okay. Okay. All right. I think I'll open up the public comment at this point. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, I can call you. Yes. John Ward and Jason Street. Um, just a, a, a question. Um, I only know what I read in the papers, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it seemed to me from these uh, licenses they were handing out without vetting the info very much, is that in each case they specified that they had a, a location and then uh, the people who allegedly were in favor of the location said, well, no, I never said that. So I, I just wondered about your comment that they have to get their license first. But it looked to me from the, 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 the license application had to say that, that we have a, a, a location lined up. That might be, um, I don't think, uh, nothing I've been told says that you will go through the EDR process before you go to get your license. It might be the fact, and I think what I've seen in the paper, and this is all I've got on that as well, is uh, what I saw in the paper was that um, certain city councilors had said that they asked around and no one had a problem with it. It wasn't a process that they were citing. They were simply citing people who said that they wouldn't mind it is what I saw. But there were pictures in the paper that said this is a proposed... This is yes, I think proposed. I think before... Uh, well, two things. Number one, you can only get the license if you say which town you want the license oh, yeah, for. No. So, so that much. And then I think from, from that perspective, what people then did is they tried to get a, an actual site and go around to the neighbors and say, would you mind it? And then those neighbors would say that we don't mind it being there. And maybe from a commentary perspective, they asked, you know, I don't know, the, the local planning department or what have you, but I have no, the EDR process would happen after the license, that I'm sure of. Are John Bell, sure, are you all set, Mr. Ward? Yeah, yeah, so I was just curious about yeah. that. John yes. Bell, Walston Avenue. Uh, listening to the dialogue, the state will issue the permit. The state will issue the license to be able to have a medical marijuana treatment center okay. in a specific town. That's what they say. Then after they've done that, the, the proponent, the dispensary, will need to go to the local uh, governmental agencies and meet either the, well, not either, um, all of the bylaws and the Department of Public Health's regulations with respect to citing a dispensary in town. Do we feel that's fairly specific in the state? Yes. That I mean that's that's just what is going to happen. Yeah, my concern is once once it's turned loose, what are your options as far as if you're not happy with it, can the state overrule? No. Um, they we're putting it into the zoning bylaw, and that's allowed, um, is to limit its use pursuant to zoning. I guess if we limited it so much, you know, but I think I'm not exactly sure what the question is, but yeah, yeah. Carol? I've seen occasions where the state would issue, well, like a, a liquor license. Mm -hmm. 
and the town has no say outside of they have control of it after it's issued, but it is issued, and you wind up with a liquor license in the town. In a way, that is analogous, in my opinion, uh, in that the state would then have jurisdiction over the operation related to medical marijuana, whereas the, ED, the ARB would continue to have jurisdiction over the special permit terms and conditions, just as they do with any development that they approve through the special permit EDR process. So if it has to do with zoning or the terms and yeah. conditions of their EDR, this board will continue, continue to have jurisdiction. But this board will never have anything to do with regulating their dispensing of marijuana or uh, cultivation yeah. of marijuana. Those jurisdictions are quite separate, state and local. Thanks. You're just going to make this as part of the existing zoning to allow for medical marijuana. Uh, the only danger I see is it almost says, okay, we could have three of them in town if we wanted to have designated three areas. Would we like to be more specific about we want to keep it caged in one place? And, if and I can respond. Yes. Yeah, so um, sure. John, I think the, the problem is that uh, has a, a planning board has the ARB in charge uh, with oversight over the zoning bylaw. You know, we have to craft the bylaw in a way that addresses it by at the district level, at the zoning district level. And if you begin to get prohibitive and say, well, B5 but only this parcel, or B3 but only in the heights as opposed to the other B3 districts, um, I think that would be subject to challenge in the courts and spot zoning. So you have to select a district. You can't prohibit it, on my reading of Correct. the state law. You can't say there's no district in which uh, a dispensary could be located. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and I think it is important to um, zone it because if it's not zoned, then I think it can probably go anywhere, would be my guess, so, <coughs> at that point. It would be an interesting it would court be an case. Interesting court case. case. You know, if you if you didn't zone it, then someone who might obtain a license can say could say, I really want to be in Arlington. Their bylaw doesn't prohibit specifically it. prohibit it or allow, or allow it anywhere. It. So, you know, court t tell the town where to put it, basically. You know, and then you wind up perhaps in a place that you really don't really want. Well, want couldn't to the building? Wouldn't the building inspector have to determine? What part of our bylaw relate uh, would cover this uh, so-called medical uh, facility? Say, yeah, I mean, I mean, you would, but you know, the choices are retail. I mean, you, you, yeah, you're I right. Mean, I, I, like I don't think the choices way. are ones that yeah. you'd necessarily yeah. want to take advantage of. So, yeah. yeah. Reminds me of an old Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly do. Uh, Michael Ruderman, uh, Alton Street, Precinct 9, Town Meeting Member also. I have three uh, very brief questions about this. Uh, it bears repeating. We are not, we do not have the authority to simply say medical marijuana dispensaries are not compatible with our town and we do not allow them anywhere. Correct. That has not been allowed by the AG's office. The, um, can we have by town meeting a more specific designation of what the child-related use properties are that would create the 500-foot buffer zone around them? Um, the simple answer is, is uh, I don't know, but it was determined with town council that it was probably best not to, um, for fear of not getting the benefit of it and it coming up as, okay, you didn't put any buffer in there. No, what I'm asking for is I'd like to know, can the board provide us with, with such properties as would qualify for that buffer zone? Uh, because it's very, I think it's very it's important to be specific on, on which ones we're talking about here. Does a school count? Does a youth center count? Does a place that um, has a primarily youth audience like uh, a, a, a dance studio yeah, or something I, I, like I that? I understand your point. I think, uh, uh, yeah. Go. Some cities and towns are ignoring this aspect completely because it's so hard to, you, you could go through the exercise you're describing and then one of, one of them could move away and a new one could move somewhere where you didn't anticipate it after de deciding that margin of where you can't have it. Um, the board and the town have so little control over who would lease to a 
a child oriented use like a dance a dance studio to use your example so it's it's probably not worth the exercise we know where the schools are and some thought was given to that the public schools when we were considering which zoning district and the three that we're the two that we're proposing now b3 and b5 are far enough away from a public school so that it passes the test in the group's view so we'll public schools seem to be the only excuse me yeah. so public schools seem to be the only ones we're certain about no. is that true this is this is all greenfield uh so it's all it's all new um mm -hmm. and uh uh you know everyone is going through it at the same time okay um you know I will give you my own thoughts on it, which have nothing to do with what town council has said or anything else. I'm going to, no, I'll say my, the members of my precinct want to know this specifically because they are surrounded by B, B5 and, and now B3, and they will want to know specifically where the line goes. But the problem is, is if you draw the line and then you don't capture something, then you've drawn a line, rather than being able to argue at a later date that something is child oriented and therefore during the EDR process or whatever else it doesn't make sense and is protected by the buffer. If you start defining, you've defined. Do you see what I'm saying? And you're stuck with whatever it is you've defined. Personally, my own view of this is you're better off with a somewhat amoebic definition so that at a later date you can make it work for you versus the opposite. And don't forget about the EDR process, which is allows exactly. uh, appropriateness in the community, uh, usefulness in the community, and so forth, all the things and, that we have to go Yeah, and, and, you know, we can't wield it like a club, but we certainly will, you know, do our, do our jobs with respect to it. The EDR process, yeah, I mean. I, mean, I, see, I get your point, because yeah. at least we'll have that club, but if you say this is defined, then oh, I'm already Yeah, look at, okay, okay, well, it's not a dance studio, yeah. so I can do it. Yeah. So, just from my own experience as an attorney, I'd rather see things that are somewhat uh, ill-defined so that I can make whatever I want it to be later on. So. Clients like that too. Mm. <laughs> or sometimes they don't after the fact. Thank you, that's all for me. Okay, thanks. Anybody else on this? Okay, well, thank you. Um, so, I think on all of this, we're just going to have a hearing tonight. I think we're going to uh, take all of these up. Most likely, even at, we're going to take the comments. You know, uh, everyone can think about them, and we can have a discussion and a vote at the uh, most likely at the next meeting would be my guess. So, if that's okay with everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I'm going to move on now to <coughs> Article um, Seven. And sure, and I'm just going to read it. Uh, this was uh, put forth by uh, John B. Belkis and 10 registered voters. Uh, voters? Belkis, what did I say? Belkis, sorry. Uh, to see if the town will vote to or take any action related thereto to amend mm -hmm. section 11.08D of the zoning bylaws to increase the required percentage of residential units designated as affordable units within any new project. Once again, Mr. Mr. Belskis, would you like to uh, come forward? You want me close by so you can whack me? <laughs> <laughs> no whacking. <laughs> I have a copy for each of you as a testimony so you can make notes as we go along. I like what you said about leaving it loose. Uh, <laughs> the intent of the article is to establish a provision for an increase in the number of affordable housing units required for consideration for a comprehensive permit application under our existing zoning bylaw. It does not specify a particular number as there are considerations of an appropriate number that must be reviewed and determined. I left this open in anticipation of future changes to Commonwealth of Mass Regulation 76056, Section 3, which is the computation of statutory minima under Massachusetts uh, Law 40B. Uh, since then, I've had discussions with our planner and with our town attorney, and they said, mm, you maybe left a little too loose and you should have been more specific. My 
plot since then, and I don't know if I can do this, uh, I've run into trouble with this before, is possibly amend that so it does read a little stronger. But let me, let me cover some of the details why I'm here with this. Uh, the primary concern is the bill before the Massachusetts State Legislature that was filed January 22, 2013, concurred by the Senate, is now under consideration by the Joint Committee on Housing. It's House Bill 3350. Public hearing was held last May. Uh, I've got a copy of the bill attached. Uh, interesting enough, I testified on behalf of the bill, which I had uh, Representative Gabley issue it for me. Uh, what the bill focused on was increasing the number of units required for eligibility for 40B permit. My rationale for that was the fact that in the past uh, five, six years, we are finding that developers have overstated their costs and have had excess profits. The law is very specific. Your profits cannot exceed 20 percent. Uh, the then Inspector General did a series of audits and found, in fact, that some of these were running as much as 50 percent over in profits. And in the 40 some odd years of its existence, Massachusetts General Law 40B had never had one dime returned in excess profits. And this was not small numbers. According to Greg Sullivan, the Inspector General at that time, he projected at least something in the area of $110 million had been, had been denied to Massachusetts cities and towns. And that money is specific. It goes back to the towns for their use in affordable housing projects. So we're basically taking money out of the affordable housing opportunities from cities and towns. Uh, one of the audits he did strangely enough, was on Arlington, maybe because I spent a lot of time with Greg Sullivan. But <laughs> uh, the one 40B that we've had in town was marked as having excess profits. Uh, the exact number, I'm not sure. Uh, I've never heard any more of it. It had the potential for something like $700,000 that was due back to us from the developer, how factual that was. Uh, there are letters on file that, uh, that show that occurred. So uh, with that in mind, I, I presented the bill. Uh, strangely enough, there was no opposition to the bill, but that, that happens a lot. Uh, it has to come out of committee. Will it come out of committee? Uh, we don't know, but that's one of the points I make in presenting this. Uh, if that bill is approved, we then have a greater difference between what we have today here in Arlington with our inclusionary zoning with 15% where NGL 40B is either 20% for rental development, 25% for ownership development. So now our window expands. Uh, might be very desirable to a developer to have that bigger difference, but my concern is we have the potential of losing our edge in housing development. Uh, and what's even more <coughs> frightening, and I've provided the details in this testimony, the Department of Housing Community Development has put forth a report, and it's titled Analysis of Impediments to Fair Housing Choice. In that, there's some very specifics, and you have included in the package here what they intend to do. Uh, they intend to change the manner in which you count the affordable units. Uh, some, some examples, uh, they feel that some of these projects where, uh, for instance, uh, rental development, you only have to provide 20% of the units as affordable, but they're counted as 100% towards your subsidized housing inventory. They want to make adjustments to that, which in effect makes the 10 percent even more difficult because now you stop losing units that you had acquired through the regulations as they, as they exist. Uh, it has not been heard yet. Will it be heard and when? I'm not sure. Uh, but anyhow, you have an excerpt with some comments as to the intent of these changes. Some of them are rather frightening. 
I provided this so you'll have time to digest it a little bit afterwards. I just want to bring it to your attention. So there's a couple of views I'd like to present. You all know of my efforts uh, to reform 40B. A lot of people tell you I'm trying to kill 40B. Uh, I got into this because uh, I found that uh, 40B is ineffective as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's, it's been around for 43 years. We have not had any great improvement in the quantity of affordable units developed. Uh, we've gone before three sessions of the legislature with bills seeking to improve 40B. Well, how do you improve 40B? The example I use mostly is what we have here in Arlington. We have inclusionary zoning. All the units that are considered the affordable units in one of these developments a deed restricted in perpetuity, they don't go away. Harvard did a study almost 10 years ago that showed that of the 20 of the thousands of units that were created by 40B, 22% of them at that time, or it's less now, it's down around 18,000 uh, 18, of the units are going to go away. They're not going to be affordable any longer. Uh, they go market rate, and they say, well, how did that happen? Because the state has never adopted deed restricting the affordable units in perpetuity, so they don't go away. Uh, I, I define it as a developer's welfare program, because they'll never start building 40 B units. Uh, we have some of those at risk here in Arlington. Well, why do they expire? They expire because the original funding federal money, state money, has been returned and paid back. Uh, and it's happening. And it's happening with regularity. The state has a solution. We buy them back. Now, wait a minute. We gave the developer a 20% profit margin. We gave them the ability to break all of our bylaws, the ability to change our density. And despite that edge, uh, they take these to market rate, and we have to go back and contract with them to extend the market rate. There's $362 million in this year's budget to take care of things like that. Not entirely. Some of it is going to go for new development, but a huge chunk of it is going to try and rescue these 18,000 units, which it's horrific. Uh, I have a member in our organization that lives in the Mandela project and the development in Roxbury. She came to me saying, nothing to do with 40B, it wasn't created under 40B. She came to me because they had gone expiring use and they were now raising the rents and all those folks. Uh, Mr. Velasquez, I don't want you to use all of your time okay. on, you, uh, you know, maybe maybe just, well, just what, what just, it is you're looking for this board to do. Um, well, unfortunately, the way it's written now, it's very difficult, but I'll leave that to you. Uh, my concern is the edge we have right now, and I don't know what the final number is, we are, the last I heard was something like uh, 1.475 or some such thing, five, total five, land five. area. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> total land area already occupied by affordable housing. That's the get out of jail free card. That doesn't stop 40B, but when 40B comes to us, we have the power to say, look, you either do it our way and the way we want it done, or we'll deny the comprehensive permit. That's what 1.5 does for you. That's the only escape from 1.5. 10%. Our ability to make 10%, as far as I'm concerned, is almost impossible. So last but not least, we've done extremely well in Arlington providing affordable housing availability. Unfortunately, it's not recognized by the distorted measurement that the state used. There's 352 cities and towns. Only 10 have a greater number of affordable public housing authority units. 10. Okay, and there are cities and towns, and I've provided that in the attachment. Uh, we also, like I say, have the housing corporation. We have inclusionary zoning. Uh, the units are deed restricted. On a per capita basis, Arlington is number one in the state for public housing. Number one. And that's all included. So what I'm saying is give us the advantage of deciding to increase 
the percentage contingent so, on these things. Mr. Bell says, let me let me ask you a few questions then. So are you asking us specifically to move 15% up to you're not say, saying what? I didn't say what. Originally, if you read my bill, you'd go to 30%. You'd go to 30%. If you go, if you follow the state, okay, and but you're not going to follow the state. Well, I'm not. I'm not necessarily following the the. My question regards the relation between our number in the affordable housing and the number that you're talking about. Okay. Why are you saying that it should go up? If my bill gets passed, the state goes to thirty percent. Connecticut's already done. This. The state goes to thirty percent for what? For the. For 40 B. 40 B units affordable to be eligible for a 40 B. 30 percent need to be eligible for 40 B. Right. How does that then affect the 1.5 that you're trying to get to? It doesn't really impact the 1.5. Um, you know what it does. It contributes to our ability to maintain and stay ahead of that if we increase the number of affordable units we want in this town. But the 30 percent. But just to be clear. Yeah. The the thirty percent doesn't move the mark that folks have been trying to get to as far as affordable units under state law. It moves in favor of the cities and towns that are trying to get to that magic ten percent. If there's forty B within that town, yes, okay, okay, but that's the only way, not okay. Um, so so when you say you're leaving it up to us. I, so you did hear my comments with Mr. Ruderman with respect to the um, <laughs> keeping it vague, vague with respect. However, this is, this is pretty that's vague. not our bylaw. This is pretty vague. <laughs> our bylaw is not vague. Right. That is a state reg that he was uh, citing that's vague. And my inclination <coughs> is not to keep bylaws vague. And I think it would be, we'd be hard pressed to do so. All right, to, with put something, it, to put it in perspective, the original version of this have the same numbers that are in my bill before the state. So 30% is what right. is Right. And what then Wise Council said, well, wait a minute. Why would a, why would a developer bother coming to Arlington on an inclusionary zoning basis to do a development when he can have whatever he wants by saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to go 40B, it's the same percentage. So we shrunk our required percentage yeah. in our inclusionary law so it made it desirable for a developer to say, yeah, I'd like to talk to you about this. So I don't have to go through the hassle and the court cases and the hack hearings, et cetera, to get my development accomplished. And it works quite well that way. So I'm saying, okay, can we protect our numbers so we still have that advantage? So one last question, and then I'll turn it over. Sorry to hijack it for the rest of the board. Um, so, but you don't know whether this bill is going to come out of the legislature um, and or anything else. So I guess my other question would be is, is well we knew we why would no DACD well have yet to respond, respond right to a but but hearing. the but the point is 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 that at the why not wait for it to go up if it goes up and bring it up <coughs> to the next town meeting which might be at wor at at worst one year's worth of you know fifteen percent versus. I don't know, pick a number, 20%, 25%. So in other words, you've only lost one year, is lost, right? One year of what it is you're talking about, and you'd have a firmer foot for, you know, moving it forward. Um, because then you could show the disparity of the 20 to the 30. And, and, but right now, it's nebulous. I mean, we, we could move to 20, and, you know, the state never changes, and you've just invited, you, you, you haven't given them any any incentive to play ball with the inclusionary zoning versus that takes us that takes us a year to accomplish if it changes. So now you get a you get a forty B development then or you get a development. You always have that possible. I mean let's let's be clear, that's always there. I guess and my my main intent was to be sure we will, I waved a red flag in front of you in town meeting, et cetera, that our performance in affordable housing is exemplary. I think we don't it's almost a physical impossibility to make 10% in this town. Mm -hmm. You're out of land. Yeah, this is not yeah. Yeah. And yet that is still hanging over our head. And a lot of people don't realize the number of units you have to create to make that 10%. Where at 5.6, you'd have to build something like 8,000 units to approach 10%. And oh, by the way, at the next census, you know, all the 8,000 units you built to make 10%, 
they become the base again, and now you're falling back to 9.4, 9.6, something like that. And it's, it's the closest thing to perpetual motion I've ever seen, mm -hmm. and not to the town's advantage. I guess my sincere effort is to do something to make sure the town is protected. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it no action, then fine. I'll provide a specific number of town meetings in an amendment problem. But, I, you know, I just want to be sure that everyone was aware of it. It's a concern, and you as our redevelopment board should be aware of it. Uh, okay. It's in your hands. Any other uh, questions for Mr. Belskis? I think most of my questions have actually been discussed between in your questions sorry, and, and did Mr. Bel Belskis' <laughs> response. And read the testimony, um, the detail in that. Uh, and and I, I appreciate your giving us all the background right. information. I haven't had a chance to read through the, um, the material in full yet. Um, but I think my, my biggest concern is that, and this was articulated already by Mike, but um, we're, we're trying to react, we're, we're essentially reacting to an unknown because we don't know what the state's going to do with this bill and where they're going to set that, that limit. But the closer you go to trying to mirror what the state's doing, I think you're disincentivizing the developer from going through the usual process, permitting process. More, you, you're sort of sending them into the arms of 40B. And that's, how we, that's how we established the 15%. We want to stay below the state 20 and 25%. Yeah, and, and so what I'm saying is the, the closer you bring the inclusionary zoning requirement up to the 40B requirement, the more likely you're pushing the developer into 40B. I don't want to change it to that extent. I want to keep that that window so that well, you still have that option. Yeah, I, I just think that this is, uh, it, it's hard to find that sweet spot though, isn't it, John? I mean, you know, at what point have you have you said to the, to the, uh, to the developer, um, I'd rather go to 40B because, you know, I'm sure you know what the statistics are at the HAC, the developer wins most all the time, right? On the ones that make it to that's a that's a hidden number. You'd be amazed how many don't make it because the developer doesn't want to undertake the expense. As a matter of fact, there's a, an MIT study that shows that uh, a vast majority of the 40 Bs that were denied locally mm -hmm. never made it to the hack yeah. because they didn't show didn't choose to spend the money. It's a very expensive process, and you can really drag it out. I mean, I've got towns that have dragged it all the way up to the state supreme court. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's considerable expense for developers, so it has to really be lucrative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other, the last comment that I have for you, just my recommendation is, you know, if you're, if you do uh, put this forward, I, I think that you do need to actually fill in the, the blank in terms of what that percentage would be, because otherwise, it, it, it's so vague. I, I don't know how the how the board could ever. That, as so you're saying no action and we deal with the town meeting. And I just take it as an opportunity to educate the town of Arlington's town meeting members as to what's going on with the affordable housing in Arlington. Uh, we've had three body bees in this town. If you look at the current master plan, it talks about the one that was done. Mm -hmm. but. You have to talk a little bit about the other two that didn't make it. Why didn't they make it? There's some interesting, there's some interesting pieces to that. Why the developer never went forward with them. So, if you like, someday I'll tell you the whole story about the other two. Though they're all matter of record. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's why I brought this to you. That there is something on the horizon. Yeah, it'll probably. But we do, as proponents, to you know provide something that we can act upon. And so, do you want to fill in that blank for us so we can actually act upon it? Because otherwise, that's what we haven't had anything yeah, to act. We don't I, have anything to act. Town upon. council wasn't sure where we'd go with this. He was going to talk to town moderator. Uh, the original warrant was filed with the ten signatures and didn't have the number in it. If I do apply a number now. Oh no! I, I think I think you can ask whether it's in scope or not at the at the meeting itself, or he can. And I, I haven't heard anyone say yeah. that it would be out of scope to fill in the blank. That's true. So I guess what I'm asking is, is do you do you want to fill in the blank now, so that we have something that we can actually act upon this evening? Well, if <clears throat> well, I guess you can do it before we vote. Yeah, which would be at the next meeting on the seventeenth. 
Yeah, right now, it is not a desire, desirable thing because we don't know what's going to happen on Beacon Hill during the next six months. The next how many months? I'm sorry, just six months. Six months. Because they have to do something with these bills by May. They, they have an escape hatch. They'll put it in a committee, and that that keeps it on the on the stove until December, and then they don't act on it until December, and it all disappears. I've been through this in three cycles, 300 bills a, a section. <laughs> Uh, it's hot. It's hot. I'm hoping I have a little more support on the housing committee this year. I've met with them. No one, no one objected to it. It's in their lap. I, I have a number of members of the board that I'm hoping will at least put this on the floor for consideration and a recorded vote. I, you people are all familiar. I hope with 40 R. Well, we haven't done a 40 hour in, in Arlington. We so want to have a, a district established. Uh, that was not done on legislation. That was done on an outside section, on amendments of the budget. No recorded vote. We don't know who put it in. We don't know how it was voted on. And yet it's equally as enforceable as 40B. It's scary. That's why I'm here tonight. <laughs> Is this a, the same information we had last year? Pardon? Is this the same information you brought us last year? You were before us last year, right? Around this time. That was a little different one. The one that I brought before you the different. last time was the uh, was the one requiring an oath. I don't know if that came before. Oh, you. right, 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 right. Oath before the zoning board. Okay. And that that passed the town meeting. Okay. Which is very good. It was also that's similar to, to this, but not not the same. Okay. No. Andrew? No, I think you and, and Bruce pretty well articulated any of my concerns and questions. Thank you. Just a quick question. Um, so the bill uh, uh, in front of the House is going to uh, increase the number of affordable units required to qualify for 40 people. But our rate is down around, what is it, 15%? You're 15, where so the state hope. is 20 and 25. Okay. So why would it not be more incentive to not do a 40B if it's higher, the developer wants to do less 40B, le less, potentially less affordable units? So With a lower rate, true. So why is it fending off 40B? The, the, the spread is going to be difficult. The only problem why is... Why is it difficult? It's, it's more likely that the higher the 40B requirement goes, the less likely the developer is going to want to do it. It's a double-edged sword because... If we're not getting sufficient units designated as affordable, we start eroding our 1.5 percent. But okay, all right. And I'll have to. It's a terrible oh, I, I, need, I need yeah. to I'll talk to you offline and know more about the sensitivity of all these numbers, and then I'll really understand it a little bit better. Because uh, I that's, that's our biggest problem is too many time. Because you said you wouldn't reach that 10 percent. We are not going to reach that 10% that would allow us to fend off a 40 B. I don't know if I still have the program so, I did for Arlington, yeah, okay. a spreadsheet that you can plug in numbers. It'll take you something like 20 years, if not more, to even come close to it, and okay. then the expiring use will make it go away. Okay. Under our inclusionary, we don't have expiring use. 40 B, you have expiring use, and we can't get that changed at the state. That's why I try to get the law repealed. Okay. Thanks. That's why. Okay. Thank Carol, you for the time. I just want to Carol, add yes. that since Mr. Belsky has went to the trouble of presenting some interesting facts, um, the public and the board may want to know that the housing working paper for the master plan is expected this month and the... It's online now. It's online. Good. I read it before I came here. Thank you. All Good. Supply so, um, <laughs> yes, please do. Yeah. I mean, that's, should, that's um, absolutely imperative that you, that you work, you know, uh, with us. Oh, We've been working on this for some time. <laughs> and the working paper will highlight some issues um, and uh, opportunities for housing in right. Arlington. So it's a, it's a good opportune time to take a look at that online since the final master plan will come to this board for adoption. Great. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any yeah, you any, any, any comments uh, from the public on this? Okay. Thank you. It's always fun. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Actually, Mike, can I just say one thing? Yes, please. Um, 
In preparation for this discussion, uh, the staff did a little bit of research just to check in with other cities and towns. Yes, and please. It did, the, the, um, every place that we discussed pretty much had between 10 and 15 percent. 10 and 15. Just for your information. I, w I didn't, I wasn't aware of that legislation that you were talking about. I didn't know about that, so. Okay. But I, we just wanted to see what the norm was. I thought I shared that with you. I didn't. No. I did. Well, now I got it. Great. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to um, Warrant Article, as I mentioned, Warrant Article 8. We won't be taking up Warrant Article 8. Um, yes. Um, since the warrant says that it's to see if the town will vote to amend the town and zoning bylaws, do we need to mm. respond to that with respect to the zoning bylaws? Uh, you know, it's well, I can tell you <laughs> that the um, town moderator said that he wasn't going to consider anything from the board. You mean as far as a no action is concerned? Yes. Um, that's a good question. But I, so, I mean, I guess we can open it up for public comment regardless. That way we're sure that we can act upon it on the 17th just to make sure if need be. You yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, I, I understand that this is going to be true treated as a proposed amendment to the town bylaw. And Correct. But because you know, it has and. I, under, I, yeah, I understand. You're, you're, you're talking about with respect to and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't have the answer for you on that. Okay. So, Did anyone come to comment on this article? I just had a question. In, in your... Um, I'm sorry, name and address. John, still John Ward and Jason yep, Street. John uh, um, in your in environmental design review, and 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 perhaps in, in other uh, special permit situations, you also govern lighting. Uh, if this draconian bylaw were to be passed. Um, um, would that um, would that overrule some <coughs> of the provisions that you have? Uh, the, I mean, you, you already deal with right. the light can't shine into the next guy's property and stuff, and and, and I, I mean I've been to a lot of hearings where you've been very concerned about where the light is going, etc. And I just but wonder I if this would supersede that. Right, but I don't, and maybe I'm wrong on this, but that's just as an overarching view of the environmental design review, I don't think we've taken it as we're the arbiters of any particular bylaw with respect to it. I think they would be separate. Um, that we would still have the ability to, under our EDR, to make the recommendations that we, or, or require the, um, uh, what we need with respect to outdoor lighting. Uh, regardless of what might be the town bylaw on the other side, I gather we can go that more strict. Mr. Warden is asking whether, if Article Eight were a zoning Does bylaw, it it out would, of our would it ability. have to? Would would the applicants also have to adhere to that zoning bylaw? And they they would. Yes. If if, if I understand. Well, but not, no, if it's not if it's, if, if it's a town bylaw, like like we have a town bylaw that regulates bug zappers, for example. Um, right. Well, I think even a better one, though, is there's a town bylaw with respect to noise abatement, right? right? And yet we will, as part of EDR, um, if there's a blower on the top of uh, right. a building, we don't look at that as in, okay, that blower is how many decibels with respect to the town bylaw. We look at it holistically, you know, with respect to the neighborhood that it's in and everything else. Okay. We, so do you, it's, it's not as defined as the town bylaw is with respect to noise abatement. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. It just, it just, it's a possibility for confusion. And I, I'm, 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 I don't think it would be confusing to us. <laughs> <laughs> because we wouldn't necessarily, 
you know, maybe we'd look at that for guidance, but I don't think we, there's any reason that we would need to um, be the ones to enforce that. We're not the enforcers no, no, of the time. Uh, some of this language is in bold face, and some of it, I mean, in standard type, and some of it is. Unfortunately, the proponent isn't here, and I'm not going to be able to probably answer I what's just what. I wonder why all this, this stuff. I, I, think I'm, I, think he, I think what. Well, I don't want to answer for him, but I believe it was amending the original bylaw, so I can't speak for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I lose it after four months. With the realization that uh, it, it, the selectmen's meeting is probably a better place for it. Uh, it Do you know when the selectmen are taking this up? I don't. I don't know when they have it on their agenda, but you, you, I'm happy to take your comments if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Um, Christian Klein, uh, Newport Street. Um, the only thing I came specifically on this one is uh, in subsection B number four, which is lighting during special events such as fairs, concerts, celebrations sponsored by the town of Arlington or approved by the Board of Selectmen. Um, most events that occur in parks are not licensed by the Board of Selectmen. They're by the Park and Recreation Commission. And so special events that occur in parks would pretty much be eliminated by this bylaw. In that regard, so that was my only primary concern. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll find out. Okay, uh, I'll check in with town council on that um, and understand what they, you know, get some final. It sounds like we've taken public comment, so <laughs> we've. We've gone through uh, what needs to be gone through. Does anyone else have any comments or discussion? So, okay, great. Thanks, Thanks. Bruce. That's a great point on the end. Okay, now, um, Article 9. Um, Article 9 is to amend the zoning bylaw of the Town of Arlington by the creation within Article 11 special regulations of a new Section 11.10 entitled Outdoor Seating for Restaurants or Take Any Action Related Thereto. Um, before we start on this, I do want to mention um, something that I received from Town Council with respect to this article. Um, Ms. Ruderman's article is oriented toward outdoor restaurant seating and around public ways. As such, the ARB and zoning bylaw are neither the appropriate form nor the appropriate regulations to address such a concern. Among other things, the Board of Selectmen maintains authority over the use of public ways pursuant to MGL Chapter 40, Section 3, as well as most regulation over private ways pursuant to Chapter 40. Accordingly, the town bylaws contain a variety of regulations on public and private ways, Title 3 which are related to Mr. Ruderman's concern, including public music, awnings, and prohibited use of sidewalks and streets. In sum, the zoning bylaw is not the proper place to insert regulations contemplated by Mr. Ruderman, so far as I understand them. So, I want to make sure that before, you know, I wanted to make sure that you understood what town council had said with respect to uh, the, um, what's been put forth, so. Thank you for that. Uh, when, when did you receive that information? I got it. Ten minutes before I got here, so well, that's I include you in. a couple hours before I did. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I, I think uh, uh, it's always suggested to check in with town council on, on purported uh, or or um, uh, possible articles, and I'm not sure that uh, um, that that was done in this situation, as I understand it. So, are we still on the agenda? Absolutely. All oh, right. Yes. No, I was just. I'm giving you what I've been told, so. Uh, the use of portions of public ways outside of restaurants and cafes for uh, could placement you, of I'm sorry, could you say your name and address? My name is Michael Ruderman. I live on Alton Street, and I'm the proponent of Article 9. The use of public ways for restaurants seating uh, is, is something fairly new in, in Arlington Dining, and I did not see in my look at the bylaws that there was 
a place that addressed the fair and orderly use of this portion of the public space. So I was proposing what I thought were some common sense, uh, reasonable uh, regulations to uh, ensure safe passage, uh, to uh, prevent overcrowding, to um, continue uh, the uh, town's uh, authority to, uh, to, to, to see and monitor and comment upon what, what would be considered inappropriate uses, and to, to make sure that um, the sidewalks, uh, portions of public ways that are being used for such seating and table areas, uh, do not become simply storage for the off-season uh, pile of tables and chairs that aren't, aren't being currently sat upon by anything but snowbanks. Um, I'm not being hypothetical here. There's uh, uh, at, least, at least one cafe in town uh, where, where the uh, tables and chairs never came in. And uh, they, they um, appear or disappear according to the snow level. Uh, they are uh, poking out now in, in another good snowstorm, and, and uh, the snowbank will simply grow around them. So I was offering some suggested language here for uh, dealing with these situations. And uh, as it's printed on pages four and five of uh, tonight's handout, uh, I believe everyone has it in front of them. So. Uh, that's, that's really all the explication that I think it needs from me. I'll uh, uh, hope to uh, be able to entertain your questions. Um, I, I think that maybe the, the reason for framing it, and I'm sort of stepping into your mind, Michael, so hopefully, and you can tell me to butt right out, um, is that a few years ago, uh, the board uh, voted and town meeting approved uh, a warrant article that said that the outdoor space, uh, outdoor seating at restaurants would not be counted towards the parking requirement for the restaurant. Other than that, though, I can't think that we have ever really ventured into this area of outdoor seating uh, and, and tried to regulate, and regulate it in any way. And I think that really is under the purview of the, the Board of Selectmen as opposed to, to us. I think some of these suggestions are fine, um, but uh, I don't think jurisdictionally it, it, it's something that, that this board can consider. This actually came up in front of this board. We weren't allowed to consider it. Common ground. If you remember with the common ground, it had to go in front of the board of selectmen. I wanted to consider it <laughs> in the worst way. <laughs> but and if I recall, the proponents had uh, quite a well-developed plan for yes. what they thought they were going to ask this board <coughs> for. Yes. They thought that matters of uh, you know, how many, how high, how wide, how tall uh, were, were building issues as well. Uh, and, and they had a, a, a quite well-developed uh, scheme in mind that they brought before this board. Right, but we did not consider it because, as you might recall, and it was actually when I cribbed my opening remarks from tonight, I cribbed many of them from that night, and it was the thing I said that we couldn't consider that night was the outdoor the seating as well as the uh, common pictures license, the entertainment license, and the liquor license, and that all of those were, as told to me by the town council, just to be clear, <laughs> was uh, under the purview of the selectmen. So. I think it's an excellent idea to have it further defined for the safety of the public, and, which is why I was so interested when Common Ground came up, mm -hmm. because there were some issues. So hopefully the Board of Selectmen yeah. reviewed well, that. and well, Right, yeah, appropriately. appropriately. Just, just the one practical example of you have a, a st facade, of a, facade of the premises uh, is not parallel with, with the street curb. How do you draw the lines to say, in front of this restaurant? Somebody needs to take a look at what in front of the restaurant means. Is it from a point perpendicular from the facade? Is it from a point perpendicular to the, to the curb line? Is it whatever the neighbors don't complain about? So I was thinking that we needed, we needed a little bit of definition here. Mm. And you'll still have individual cases that 
<coughs> but this is Step this I think is is exactly uh, in the spirit of um, uh, that that uh, uh, well-respected legislator Robert Frost, who said that good bylaws make good neighbors. <laughs> Did town council offer a way uh, to get this in front of town meeting? I think the problem that you have, and no, I, I don't, because. Um, the problem is, is that you've you've picked the zoning section that you want to amend. Well, this is all proposed language, but it would be out of scope to try to propose changing the regular bylaw, not the zoning bylaw. I don't know. I would talk to the town moderator. I, I, I look. That, that's. I'm just giving you my own mm -hmm. view of it as I look at it. Um, but I can't tell you. I I didn't go that. I did not ask that next question. Okay. Um, because I got it 10 minutes before I got here. So. Any other comments, questions, Carol? There is a process um, in um, and regulations. Actually, I don't know how detailed the regulations are, but there is an application uh, that is followed every time someone wants outdoor seating, and there it's pretty detailed, and they do always ask the dimensions, how much sidewalk they want to use. They ask for a layout to see where the tables are. And they do ask other departments, including uh, planning and community development, for input on the proposal before the Board of Selectmen votes on it. I don't know if um, anyone provided you or if you spoke with the Selectmen's office, if they gave you the application to see what it is they request, what information they already request for a proceeding. But if you haven't seen that, then you, you, might, be, you might be interested in... Um, relieved somewhat to know that some of the things you're asking for in, in this language is already required before outdoor seating is approved. And that would be as a matter of procedure, but not, um, well, it, it would be uh, up, up to the uh, decision of the selectmen whether or not to uh, mm -hmm. adhere to that, change it, uh, abolish it, uh, uh, or, or, or whatever. That's right. Any other public comment? Yes. Um, Christian Klein, uh, Newport Street, unfortunately I'm over two, I think, tonight on what I came here to, to talk about. Um, my only concern, um, and I, I, I appreciate the uh, the effort in here, is the, the four foot minimum width. Mm -hmm. I think it's too narrow, um, especially in the area of Brattle Square, uh, where there's far more area and far more uh, activity, I think, a four foot minimum requirement is uh, it's insufficient for people to pass normally. Um, surely within the, the ADA, it's the 60 inches for uh, full accessible passing and with people with strollers and stuff, the, a four foot is never going to work. Obviously on the opposite side of, the, of Mass Ave where it's a much narrower sidewalk and I know that there are stores there that are trying to get some kind of outdoor seating as well, that there, there may be some kind of accommodation for that, but I think that the in general that we want to try to provide is as an accommodating a pedestrian way as we possibly can um, that's not choked up with tables, etc. Okay. Um, anything else? Okay. Well, thank you. Um, any other comments generally about the Warren articles. That, that actually brings us to the last, that is the last Warren article that we have to consider. So, hearing then, uh, close. close. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Um, I move that we close the public comment portion of the Warren article consideration. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming, and thank you very much for putting everything forth. Appreciate it. Um, next item of business is actually just minutes. Have you been in Halifax? I have not. Well, in Halifax, all the restaurants are about to seating right next to the huge propane tanks. But in the, I've been in Halifax.
the asset. And, uh, and, and they take over the whole sidewalk. The pedestrians have to walk on the street. We'll try to prevent that. Yeah. <laughs> not not, yeah. Not, I wasn't joking about it. Mm. 556. Wow. This evening. So. What's that? What's that? My town council's. My town council email it was 556 this evening. So. Um, okay. Um, so. The minutes to the meeting of. January 13th. January 13th. Uh, January 13 minutes. You're all set, Carol? Yes. Uh, I have some changes that Bruce offered. Okay. okay. So I'm going to work from them, if I may. Sure. Well, oh, no, actually, I'm going to let you take it because I wasn't here for it. Oh, okay. So okay. feel free. So, uh, so my first. Uh, change, and Carol has these already, um, is uh, on the approved date, that would be March 3rd, 2014, right? Right. Okay. Um, in the third paragraph, uh, the third line, um, it just a little sort of stylistic change here. So Mr. Max Tusis, uh said, instead of reviewed, that the Mill Street Beacon with a small b on Beacon was still being reviewed and that he didn't know results of tests. And then in the next sentence, uh, Tech came up with a list of measures consistent with the tool report for sign and pavement markings. I, I just struck the on consistent recommendations because it, it seemed like the sentence would be better without it. Um, And then down in the next paragraph, um, this is the third line, well, actually up to the, the fourth line, um, Cape Cod, the first word Cape needs to be capitalized. Um, and in the third line from the bottom, emergency vehicles and removed by snow removal, removal instead of uh, from snow removal. So the, the sentence reads that Mr. Tonkin said that the bollards also prevent cars from driving up the bikeway, but they can be driven over by emergency vehicles and removed by snow removal. For snow removal. For snow removal. For snow removal. Or for snow removal. Okay, yes. For snow removal. That's what she meant. She had, you had from. So she must have meant. Okay. <laughs> um, and then continuing on, the next sentence or second sentence after that uh, begins, Mr. Miller replied that there were supposed to be bollards elsewhere, but they get removed or run over by vehicles and are not replaced. It reads a little more clearly. And last one was in the uh, paragraph in the middle of the page, uh, the last sentence, oh, would read better if it said she would also report if the owner of the Alta project will extend the escrow deadline. Deadline. That's it. Okay. I thought it would be helpful if, right in the documents used, the first one that's the document from Jason Sobel, that it said Green International, so we know where he's from. They didn't say it initially, and then I discovered it later in the notes. Oh, really? At least I didn't catch it in the minutes. And then I, later on, I saw that someone referred to Green International, so I remember that. So I'm glad you It didn't that. say it on the top of the document somewhere? The documents weren't in front of me. I don't have the oh, documents when oh, I'm okay. doing okay. meeting, but thank you. That's um, going to be a lot better to have that there. And then we talked about using the full name of the intersection. I know it's really lengthy, but instead of saying this... Um, reported to the board on the Summer Street signal optimization. Mm -hmm. What we're going to use, oh, in the very first paragraph, the third line. Uh, because we were talking about that full intersection. I'll write whatever you think I should write. I, I forget <laughs> the full name. It was Summer Street, Sims Road, oh, Brattle. That one. Brattle. There's, wasn't there 4th Street, Oak? 
No, I'll tell it's for the town. The, the title of the report had it in it. Um, and we were talking about using that full intersection name okay. yeah. to be consistent with the title of the report. I think if you looked back in the report, just what you wanted to do, right? I might be like the Arcs are one of those. I can I can figure that for the moment. Yeah, it had a, it had a full name. What happened fast with Laura Dixon? It's what? Hemlock. 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 Hemlock, Hemlock Rattle right. Summer Sims. Sims. Intersection. Okay. Okay, and then um, the. The, after the Mill Street crossing, or let's see, the same first paragraph, the next line where Mr. Maximus is starting, I thought it would be helpful to say for the first intersection in question, Mr. Maximus reported that the signal detected loop, so we knew where he was starting. I know most of us here know that that's what he was talking about, but just for somebody else reading it. And then again, in the beginning of the next paragraph, you would use the full intersection name instead of just for Summer and, and Mill Street, would be for the Summer Sims. Where? The first line of the second paragraph. So Mr. Simmons, Fitzsimmons moved to accept the traffic mitigation for the Summer Sims Road, Hemlock, okay. Fratto intersection, and Mill Street. And then should we say that somebody seconded the motion and all approved? I didn't have that, so I'm hoping someone else has that. Either you can always say it was seconded. It wasn't me because I was the chair. <laughs> it's not a requirement. We always oh, do. Oh, you don't have to. Our yeah, practice is to always say who seconds, but if but it's, it's seconded, you don't have to. As long as we know it was seconded and we do know it was. So we should say it was seconded Actually, and all approved? Because we did do you take remember... Is it possible that you started a motion and then we waited until later? Because I also thought from my minutes that oh. I recall that there may have been, you may have started a motion, and that, I can't look at Mike because Mike wasn't there. Um. And then we said to wait until they, no, because on this one, Jake was here and they were ready to do the work, right? Correct, because Jake confirmed that they would developer would pay for the signal timing changes. It's just odd that I don't have. I usually say what the vote was in my notes. Mm -hmm. Although at the very end, too, we had a, well, that's just to adjourn. Usually put, say something about, so someone's been moved to adjourn, somebody seconded, it, all voted in favor. Yeah. yeah. Not that that's that important either. Carol, Carol, in your notes, did did we wind up eventually moving and approving, no. seconding and approving the the mitigation and the not in my notes, but it doesn't mean anything. It's not in my notes. I'm not mm. infallible. In we did have thinking. to make a motion and, and accept it to release the the forty thousand escrow. Right. So we must have made a motion. Did you say forty thousand in there? Yes. <laughs> Well, I may have said 40,000, but it's 15,000. <laughs> Can you correct that now, or is that, you have to say what it says? It's not 40,000, definitely. That was the CVS escrow. That was well, the that was, no, 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 it's, it's a little different. There was a 40,000, oh, wait. A $40,000 escrow from Brigham? For the, no, for, no, the, for, the, for the traffic signal at Sims. For the Sims. Yeah, 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 this is the Sims one. No, I think sorry. it's right. We're still on Sims. <laughs> I think it's right. Yeah. Don't get it. I'm sorry. So we had to make a motion to release that, right? And that's what this is discussing. See what happens when you're not here. <laughs> sounds like a lot of activity, actually. There, there, was, um, there were documents being documented. Documents and I was being busy documented. documenting the document, so I don't have yeah. any record of the vote beyond the beginning of the motion, if a vote was. But I do have a vague recollection that there was a, I thought someone started a motion, but yeah. then stopped because the, it wasn't ready, it, the, the board wasn't at the point in the discussion where the uh, motion was complete or where, where the discussion was complete. I thought that was with the Mill Street 
intersection. We didn't make any motions there. We asked them to come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds right. And maybe we started to make a motion at that one, but then we said to come back. I'm pretty sure we made some kind of motion. I can look at my notes. Um, if you tonight. recall that we voted it, we can just say it was seconded and all voted in favor because you you never you did not have a vote that night where there was anyone who abstained or voted against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know we had a vote on something because Mike had told me we weren't going to vote on anything. And, <laughs> and you were upset. <laughs> and, was, and you were upset. I said, oh my gosh, then we're this voting. must be. It. <laughs> and you were upset. Like you can that. just say that it like was that. seconded, duly seconded, and all voted. All yeah, yeah, I remember cursing Mike's name. We did all approve, and then we let Jake leave. <laughs> Put those in the minutes. Exactly. He was yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he was waiting for some type of resolution on that. Okay. Okay. So then you handled the next two I had. Okay, in the third to the last paragraph, in the middle of that paragraph, after the sentence, Mr. Fitzsimmons also asked the TAC return with proposed reading of the intersection signage. Um, I wanted to add something about TAC will try to come back to the board within a month to discuss their findings because that's what was settled. We were asking them what was a reasonable time so that they would have some time. So in, anywhere you want that? Right after that intersection after the, signage sentence. Okay, so before Ms. Wiener? Yes. Tech will try to come back to the board within a month to discuss their findings. Okay. And then just the ending, if we have to add so-and-so move to adjourn. If we don't, we can leave that. I think you usually have that at the end. to accept the uh, minutes of January 13th, 2014 as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And abstain. All right. Now, I have to apologize because <laughs> I forgot to do one thing during the open portion of the hearing, so I'm going to ask for the public comments to be opened uh, Again on the on the hearing, if you could please. So moved. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Sorry, we're gonna still open writing up public down the comments. Okay, sorry. Wait, wait, stop. Yep, yep, I'm yep, almost yep. there. Oh. No, I should have reminded you. Yep. I had it right in front of me. It's your fault. It is. <laughs> <laughs> And then Mr. Kerr uh, well, actually, um, said what? <laughs> I move that we reopen the public hearing uh, comments portion of our meeting tonight um, with respect to the warrant articles. Do have a second? Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Okay. What I should have done uh, near the beginning of the meeting, and certainly during the comment period, is um, received uh, into uh, the record uh, the comments of uh, Christopher Loretti uh, from whom we received uh, written comments because he couldn't be here tonight. So, um, Carol, you have a copy of those that you can include in the minutes or as um, an attachment? Wait a minute. Mr. Kerr said that he... I'm sorry. I, I... Yes. I, 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 I will entertain a motion to receive. Okay. The comments, the written comments of Christopher Loretti, which we received by email, maybe a day or two ago. March 3rd. And make them part of the public comment record. You received them today. Maybe you received them. Today. Yeah, no, I got them all. Oh, March 1st, I see it. Saturday. Okay. So Thank moved. You. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Uh, and you know what I should do before we move on is, Carol, did we receive any other comments from anyone else? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I'll entertain a motion to close the uh, comment period of the hearing. So moved. Second. Oh. I'm trying to be there. proof. Exactly. <laughs> Out of the blue. Um, awesome. Great. That was. Dean and Andrew. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry about that, folks. That just slipped my mind as we were going through. Did you remember? Yeah. No, I'm happy I did. Um, anyway, so I think that's all the business for this evening, unless anyone has anything else. Okay. I'll entertain motion to adjourn. Move Someone. to adjourn. There we go. Second. Second. All in, what was the, sorry. All in, all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.